In this video, we are calculating beta using the data we collected from the previous video. The first step is to make sure that the data is listed in ascending order by the date. We see that that is true. The oldest date is at the top. We want to calculate the returns in Microsoft stock and in the S&P 500 on a monthly basis and also risk-free rate on a monthly basis. To make things easier, I'm going to move the S&P 500 to, so that it's to the left of Microsoft and I'm going to just insert it alt I E so now we have the market first and then the Microsoft that will just make our calculations easier later because we want to have the market returns on the x-axis to calculate the returns in the S&P 500 and Microsoft which I'll label return M for return on the market and then R MSFT for return on Microsoft, we will calculate the change in the values over the earlier value, which can easily be calculated by B3 divided by B2 minus one or the later divided by the earlier. These columns were already formatted to be percent. So if you like to See this as a percent, we have that formatted there as a percent. I'd like to see a few digits. I'm going to copy and paste the formula for the market so that we're doing the same for Microsoft. We're going to copy that and paste it all the way down to the bottom of our time series. And there we have it. Now the return on the treasury over a month is going to be calculated in a very different way. So it's important you pay attention that the values given from Yahoo Finance on the treasury are not the bond prices. These are the annual uh, percentage rate on the treasury bond. So the September 10 year bond rate was 4.59579%. We want these returns on a monthly basis. We also want them in a decimal form because you see here, I don't multiply this by 100, though it's formatted as a percent. So to make the treasury returns in the same unit that we're measuring returns for the market and Microsoft, we divide that value by 1200. The 12 is to make it monthly and the 100 is to make it in a decimal form. We already have these columns formatted as a percent. So that's why the percent sign comes in there. I'm going to copy and paste that down to the bottom of our time series. The next step is to calculate the excess returns of the market and of Microsoft over the risk-free rate. And that will be obtained by taking those returns and then subtracting the risk-free rate. So we're going to get the market excess return and the Microsoft's excess return. We simply take the market return, subtract the risk-free rate, make sure we subtract the Microsoft return and the risk-free rate there. So now we have Microsoft minus the risk-free rate. So let's just confirm that everything looks good there. That's the market minus the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate here is the treasury divided by 1200. Microsoft return is indeed the change in Microsoft stock and the RM is indeed the percent change in the S&P 500. I recommend you just check to make sure all those formulas look right when you do it. And now, now let's just paste that down to the bottom. And these two columns will be used to calculate beta. I'm going to select those two columns and insert a scatter plot. There's other ways to calculate beta within Excel, but I like to use scatter plot because it's a nice vis visualization of how the returns relate with each other. And so the Microsoft's excess returns is on the Y axis and the market's excess returns are on the X axis. We can see by the scatter plot that there does seem to be a positive relationship or trend between the Microsoft returns and the market returns, though it's not a perfectly positive correlation. 
there is volatility around a trend line. Let's put in the trend line by selecting the data. So I left to use the left button on my mouse to select the data. And then with the right button, I trend line. We're going to add a linear trend line. We don't need to change anything else till down here. To be most accurate, we should set the intercept to zero because according to CAPM, the, there, there should be no intercept to force the trend line to go through the origin. We want to display the equation on the chart because that will show us the beta. We could display the R squared as well, but R squared is something different. We can talk about that in another video or another lecture. Let's just keep it simple and just look at the beta. And then we can X that out. And now we see the equation that's shown here. We make the font larger, so it's easy to see. The Y stands for the what the Y values, which are the excess returns of Microsoft, and the X are, represent the excess returns of the market. And then the coefficient here is the beta. It tells us that Microsoft stock tends to increase with the market or decrease with the market at a rate of 1.03 times the market return. If I just round it to two places past the decimal point.